In order to make this Stug 3G a runner, we're going to need a transmission. And there was no way we were going to be using the original one that came with this. Luckily, against all the odds, we managed to source an original unit from overseas. But since it hasn't been used in over 80 years, it's going to need a thorough inspection. Because when we finally drop it into this vehicle, there is no way it's coming back out again. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. There are two transmissions, an early war variant for our future Stug 3B project, and one for the current Stug 3G. We'll be going more into the journey of how we got these parts in a later video. Right now, we need to focus down the Stug 3G. Before we can fit this unit, it has to be thoroughly inspected. That's what Steve's doing this week. All of us were very excited until... Water coming out of a transmission is not great news. At least it's oily water. Over a year ago, we pulled apart and rebuilt the diff we were originally intending to use for this vehicle, but German transmissions and differentials were usually paired together and line bored, so we're not entirely confident that we can just remove this one and swap it out. We decided to crack the inspection port and have a look inside. Why not? Why not? Where'd you find that hammer? Hmm? That's my hammer. I'm too embarrassed yeah, to show it. I'm too, I'm too embarrassed to show this hammer to you guys. Do you like this? <laughs> some, some jobs require precision, right? Yeah, yeah. Steve was a watchmaker in his um, past. Watchmaker. <laughs> 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 All right, there's a few ports on the transmission that you're already open. Uh, open to the elements. It's not water from just rolling around washing it, is it? No, it's been there before. Well, the seal actually goes on the inside and I'll work outside. Can oh, we put this under there? Oh, yeah. I'm expecting there to be a huge amount of oil to come out, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. I'm well, just saying never, Steve. Oh, look at that. Gushing out. Mm. There's like oil that's mixed with water. Yeah, bone might be right actually. Because it's scraping off with your fingernail. If that was actual surface rust of the tooth of the gear, you'd never be able to get it off with your fingernail. Just looking like it's going to need a a really good clean out and we may be able to do some of this in situ without having to take the thing apart because the less we take apart the better it is yeah. I think. For sure. That's this for a bit of an archaeological dig. I'm not going to take it out completely because the minute I take this plug out the rest of the oil is going to gush out. So maybe There's no way we weren't taking this out immediately. Oh look at that. Holy. Is that just congealed yeah, it's just oil? Gunk. Mm. Pretty tasty. Oh, look at that. That's a seal. <laughs> Looks like a brisket. Oh, it does too. Yeah. We'll have to send it off to Cairns University and get them to analyse it and see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, it doesn't seem like there's any metallic bits in it, which is good. But yeah, it'd be interesting to know what it's made out of, isn't it? Nice. Mm. It's not pretty but the helical gears look much better than what we were thinking they might. It's like um, big repair patches where they've welded the surface. After the Easter break, we moved on to the transmission. I think the name of the game with the transmission is going to be to open it up a bit so we can have a bit more of a detailed inspection of what's inside the trans because it's been sitting around for, what, 70 years, 75 years. We already know that it's had a bit of water and Crust, crusty old sludgy oil and stuff in it so objective today is just to be able to have a bit better look inside the transmission see the condition of the gears it's going to have a bit of a go to see if i can get it to move we may need to put some heat on it oh, look at that look at that
Look at that. Ooh. The thread's in perfect condition. And you know what? It doesn't look sort of half bad in there. Certainly seen worse. positive start. The metal threads into the aluminium housing looks like that it you don't have sort of the same sort of corrosion problem where you've got metal to metal. Yeah. It sort of rusts into one piece. So I'm sort of guessing that this is where all of the linkages for the gear selector are in behind this cover. That'll also give us another sort of view on what's inside, whether there's been water damage. Quite a large casting that goes all the way here finishes finishes at this point here and then goes up around here so I've got quite a few bolts to take off and each one of the bolts has got like a locking tab on it mm. to stop it from coming loose so they've got to be peened out of the way got to take off this oil pipe so there's a bit of work to do this is one of the injectors that keep the gears and the differential lubricated there's one on the opposite side and one in the middle section that we inspected earlier Oh my goodness. <laughs> a nozzle on the end there so that um, oil from the pressure pump, forced lubrication, gets squirted into a spot in the transmission. It's probably where the dry pinions or something are where you need the maximum uh, lubrication. Oh, they're coming off really easy. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's come loose. very well designed not a single bolt head sheared off in the making of this episode Sounding like it's starting to come loose by itself. Time for the first big reveal. Oh, look at that. There's movement. I 
Well, this is obviously the access plate for all the selector mechanisms. Driver's input of the gear lever, mechanical effort is translated into the respective movements to select the different gears. Probably in this mechanism here, there'll be a series of interlocks as well to, to stop the driver from selecting two gears at once so that you can only select one particular gear. But I don't see any real nasty evidence of a huge amount of water ingress. A line of the fluid here, but this is the oil, and over time it's, um, the oil is just degraded down into a sludge. I only want to remove the bare minimum to be able to do an inspection and cleaning of all the components, because the less you take apart, the less chance of things breaking and you know, getting, getting lost or whatever. But it's promising, looks good. Really good. Six speed transmission with one reverse gear, and the shift pattern is, is to the left and up is reverse, down and then up is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's third and fourth. Pleasantly mechanical action to it. Wow. So it's sort of coming to life. Because this doesn't actually give us really access to look inside deep into the transmission, uh, the next thing to try and do is to pull off this front reinforcing plate. We'll undo these bolts and take the unit out and see if we can actually look inside with the scope to check the condition of the gears. Yeah, there's quite a bit going on there. I think I'll need some heat. Steve makes a start on this middle injector. Wow, off it goes. Coming. Oh, that's nice. What do you reckon the chances are of this coming out? Zero. <laughs> Normally locking tabs are considered enough, but not for the Germans. A split pin in a castellated nut is also included to add an extra annoying step to the process. Look at that. It's just right as out. well everything is so well made that they came out fairly easily. Beautiful. Okay. Split pins plus you've got locking lock, tabs. Locking tabs on them. I probably didn't have as much confidence in people tightening them up properly. So this is sort of a fail-safe way of making sure that um, that uh, even if they weren't tightened properly, they wouldn't come apart. It's wow. nice. Gee. That's nice, isn't it? Not bad at all. Yeah, they're pretty hefty, aren't they?
Easy peasy. Take no prisoners. Hey. Yeah, there's a few sort of rust stains, but nothing too dramatic. But what we've got to remember is, is that uh, probably through the inside of the shaft is path for oil to flow. So we really need to get into all of that to make sure it's all clean properly. Uh, all things considered, it's probably looking looking pretty good. Uh, it's a bit out of my wheelhouse when it comes to experience-wise. So. I think anyone could probably say that. Yeah, I don't know how many living experts there are on this particular transmission set, but uh, so far, it's, I haven't seen anything that's been a real showstopper. But uh, I'm sort of leading leaning towards that we're going to have to pull it apart a bit more. As much as I'd like to keep it together, we'll probably have to take it apart a bit more. What about if we have a have a go at looking inside with the bore scope? Oh, great idea. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Yes, we've got a few ac access points where we can put the bore scope in to have a bit more of a look. I think it's the oil filler for the, for the transmission. So with, with any sort of gearbox, it's never full of oil, right, up to the brim. You, you'll have a certain level of oil. And with this transmission, because we think it's got an oil pump, it'll pick the oil up from the lowest part of the transmission and it squirts it to various places in the transmission and then for the rest of it the action of the gears going through the oil scoops the oil up and, and helps lubricate the drivetrain. So that's looking upwards at the lowermost gear in the gear set so I'm sort of thinking that could be fifth, fifth gear or sixth gear being at the back of the transmission. You can have a look you can see that there's sludge, quite a bit of sludge in the bottom and that remember all that yellow mm. sort of feral tofu stuff that we got out of the front of it? That's more of it that's sitting on the bottom of the transmission but look at the shiny how shiny the gear is. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's a pretty good sign. Steve changes the camera to a side view for a different angle. Yeah, so this is looking directly up. So that's the going through the plug. That's our gear that we were just looking at before. Yep. And above it is its companion gear. That and looks all right too. Yeah, it looks bright and shiny. The inside of the uh, casing looks good apart from the sludge at the bottom the inside of the casing looks pretty good like compared you remember on the AMX how mm. how everything was powdery white so the inside of the transmission casing has been pretty well protected so that's a really good sign that so far so good Steve so far so good That's probably about the worst gear that I've seen so far uh, in terms of the surface finish, but that... Mm, that's you know, right where that opening is. Yeah, because that's... Even though that the plug was on there, any humidity and stuff, that's where, where it would come, come through. Mm. You see, we can have a look at... down into its companion gear.
That's maybe not looking real good. But who knows after it's been cleaned up a bit. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to tell. I'll just swap it to the side view and see if we can get a bit better look at it. Yeah, so that's right up against the right up against the teeth of the, the gear that we're just looking at. So we're right right up against that gear that we were just looking at before and there's you can see the surface rust that's on the tips of the teeth. Mm. Uh, again, we won't really know until until we get to pull it apart to see how deep that pitting is because the gears will have a hardened surface on it and if the rust has gone through the hardened surface then it could be in strife. Yeah, well, it significantly weakens the, the, the teeth and it could, could fail. And it also depends on the gear, the gear it is as well too, because the most critical gears for this transmission will be two and three, because they'll be the ones that will be used out on the field. First maybe used sort of moving in and around the, the museum, so, you know, we don't have to go into battle with this thing, it's just got to be able to go around and do the laps we want it to do. Nice and slow, yeah. yeah. I mean, that looks really good. You can still see a bit of see the cross hatch on the on the teeth. So yeah. that's the original sort of uh, finishing marks on there. It's going to require a little bit more thought, given the rarity of the transmission. We want to do it properly, but we also want to try and reduce the amount of work for ourselves and, and risking damaging stuff. So I'll have a bit of a think about it over the next few days about uh, what's going to be the next steps. I still think probably ultimately we're going to try and split the transmission so that we can be sure of getting in and cleaning everything out of it. Uh, at a minimum, I think pulling the, the differential unit off the, the front is going to allow us a little bit of extra access to try and clean all of the gunk out. Of it. It's early days and we haven't decided on a course of action yet. But when we do, we hope you'll join us for what, as Steve puts, is real voyage of discovery but that's all we have time for today join us next wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix so until then i'm kurt from oz armor and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>